Brock, it is Brock. It's wonderful to meet you. Welcome to the Glasgow clan. So tell us how you've managed to end up coming here to Glasgow for next season. Um, well, it's a funny story. Uh, you know, trying to find a job this summer. Um, it was a little difficult, a little more difficult than I thought it would, even considering I had a full season under my belt. But um, Gar uh, Gareth, uh, he had messaged me two years ago when I was playing in my first year in Denmark and asked if I wanted to join them in playoffs. Uh, considering our team wasn't making it. And I thought about it, but I thought we'd stay in Denmark. So that's kind of how um, the talks began this summer. We were trying to find people that I knew, and I forgot that I'd gotten reached out by a team in the UK uh, a couple of years ago. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it turned out great and uh, landed me a job. And uh, I've heard nothing but great things about the organization and uh, the city itself. So high, how high would you say the Elite League's reputation is in the market right now when you consider GB have done reasonably well in the World Championships, our teams are doing okay in European terms as well? How high is that reputation? Um, I think every league has its uh, own reputation and uh, I think a lot of leagues have a great reputation and um, it's just a matter of what kind of hockey you're looking into. I know I've heard from players that I know played with and against that have been in the UK, it's a lot more similar to North American style, uh, which, um, you know, for myself, I haven't played that style of hockey in a couple of years, just playing in Europe for the last three seasons. But um, it certainly is something I've uh, become very used to uh, very quickly um, with the pace and uh, the physicality and the skill set. So, um, you know, I, it's funny, I was looking at a bunch of the rosters of other teams and at least half the teams are guys I've played with and are against. So it's, it'd be very familiar faces on the ice and um, just the competitiveness. You know, at the end of the day, I just want to play good hockey and I've heard nothing but great things about the UK, um, and especially over the last few years. So for myself, you know, I'm just thankful to have a job and uh, to be able to experience uh, a new country in Europe um, and especially the UK, you know, it's very similar to, North American uh, with the language barrier and the culture and whatnot. So I think for myself, uh, my wife and I were just thankful, to, um, especially during these tough times, to be able to land a job over in Europe and uh, you know to be able to experience Europe uh, one more season. So Brock, tell us what you'll bring to the team. What are your strengths? What will the fans see in you this season? Um, myself, you know, I'm six two, two hundred five, two ten. So I'm a big body. Um, I think um, I think what you'll notice for myself is I'm very versatile. Um, you know, I can play in all this all different situations and positions. Um, you know, I log a lot of minutes. You know, so I think uh, Malcolm is relying on me to play a lot of minutes, and I think he said I'm the only right-handed shot defenseman on the team. So <laughs> I think um, you know that plays an advantage to myself. But I think. You know, I'm 29 years old, and I know I play a junior against Chloe Soul. He's, he's a year older than me, so I think him and I, being veterans on the back end with a lot of experience um, from junior to pro, uh, I think Malcolm's expecting a lot of us or a lot out of us to be able to hold the team together in the back end and, um, you know, have hold everyone accountable, including ourselves, and, uh, you know, just play in those big moments and those big minutes. And, um, you know, so from that, you know, I'm just expecting myself to play lots, um, be very consistent on the ice, you know, play physical when I need to, you know, chip in offensively when there's the opportunity. But at the end of the day, you know, defend my own end, you know, make sure I get the puck up to our forwards quickly and for clean breakouts. And, um, you know, just try to not be in our end as much as possible. Now, as you've already mentioned, you've been in Europe the last three years. You started in Hungary for a year. The last two years, you've played in Denmark. What's the biggest thing you've got out of those those moves in particular? What would you say is the biggest thing you've got from those? those? Um, I mean, from playing in North America to Europe, the biggest thing I've noticed is um, puck possession. And, you know, it's not so much dump and chase. Uh, you know, get on the forecheck. It's a lot of, you know, if you don't have a play, you know, regroup with your play, you know, your defense, you know, get your forward swinging again. Um, it's all about puck possession. You don't want to give up the puck in any league, but I find in Europe, especially with the bigger ice, it does make things a lot easier. Um, if you don't like what you see, you just bring the puck back and just regroup. Whereas in North America, if you get in that red line, you know, you would just want to get it deep and then get your forwards uh, 
on the four check and uh, try to get the puck that way. But all in all, you know, hockey's hockey. You know, it doesn't change too much at the end of the day. You know, everyone's trying to win. Everyone's got a job to do. So at the end of the day, it's about how much you want to win and what you're willing to pay the price to do so. And, um, you know, are you a team player or are you doing it for yourself? So I think all in all, it doesn't matter where you play in the world. Everyone's trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to do their best and win. Um, so for myself, like I said earlier, I'm just I'm thankful to have a job again this year. And, um, you know, I want to help Glasgow clan win uh, the championship. And I looked at our roster and I think uh, especially with some more pieces coming in. I think uh, it's more than doable and uh, anyone can win in hockey. And I just I'm excited for the opportunity and uh, to get things rolling in October. I noticed a couple of years back you worked in Odense Bulldogs along with uh, Mark Lefebvre, who's well known to us here in the UK from his time with, with Dundee and Coventry. Was he someone that you sought out uh, some some advice over whether to come here or not? Was he someone that, that, that talked us up a little bit? Um, it's funny. I met Mark. I met Mark uh, two years prior to that in uh, the East uh, East Coast Hockey League uh, in Cincinnati. I had him for a couple months there. So when I heard he was coming into Odense halfway through the year, I think I was the only player that he knew personally. So him and I had a really close connection because he wanted me to help him out a lot in the dressing room. And I knew he came from the UK and he spoke very highly of it. And um, I think, I just think, you know, whether it's the UK or, you know, Germany or whatever, I was just looking out for myself and my wife and whatever was the best opportunity that came across the table we were going to take um, and, you know, Glasgow happened to have been that. And it's funny, uh, it wasn't until I talked to my dad, uh, I didn't realize the historical significance of the city. Um, you know, my dad told me it's one of the biggest European cities in the whole continent, which I had no idea about. So I think that really got us even more excited about uh, the move across um, to Scotland and being in one of those very historically cultural cities, um, which just adds to the value um, of the experience that we're going to have this year. We'll get to your dad soon. Uh, he's on the list, don't worry. <laughs> but I want to ask about coming to an English-speaking country rather than where you've been previously, of course. And uh, I've spoke to many players through the years, and they always say when they go to these countries, that that's an obstacle in itself, you know, the, the communication and things like that. Some teams are fine. There's a lot of English speakers. But there is, in some cases, there is that language barrier. So how much will coming to an English-speaking country help in settling into a new team? And is, is a bigger thing as we're led to believe sometimes? Oh, it's it's definitely huge. I know my first year in Hungary, we had only five players that could put full sentences together, and the rest of them were very young. But you know, English was quite the challenge. But Denmark, we got very fortunate because they learn English at grade four, and it's their second language. So surprisingly, the English uh, the language barrier was great in Denmark. Everyone knew English, so you could carry on a full conversation without. Um, Kind of being left out um, while they're talking amongst themselves but obviously when you can go to a country where the first language is english it does make uh, it does make things a lot easier with the transition of moving and uh, you know going out to restaurants or grocery shopping or just you know asking help for directions uh, it does make life a lot easier but a lot over the years um, especially the local uh, players they've um, they've been outstanding um, you know, going out of their way to help uh, help us in uh, Canadian Im Canadian or American imports out uh, to make our life a lot easier. And if there's any questions, they've always been great to answer them the best of their ability or show us uh, who we can get in contact with. So I think I just it's always easier when the, um, it's a lot it's uh, very relatable to your first speaking language. Um, so that definitely will make things a lot easier for this year uh, when we move over. I'm going to ask about your dad now, and I'm speaking as someone whose dad's biggest sport and achievement was getting a trial with uh, the Partick Thistle football team uh, as a teenager many years ago. Your dad, Jeff, is a four-time Stanley Cup winner, three times with Edmonton Oilers, one with the New York Rangers. Just how cool was it to have a dad with that, that much bling, for want of a better expression? Uh, very surreal is the best word I would use. Um, you know, I can recall going to the rink when I was a kid, uh, usually on Saturdays to go hang out with the room and, you know, pretend I was one of the players um, and hang out with the trainers. 
I mean, obviously to have that in your back court uh, when you're pursuing a career in the same profession as his, um, it does make life a lot easier, but it also does make uh, challenges for yourself. But I found over the years that those challenges were only because I forced them upon myself, trying to be like my father and what he'd done in his career. But the older I got, the more I realized that I wasn't going to duplicate his career, uh, especially the way he plays, because he's four inches taller than me and about 30 pounds heavier. So we were very, two very different players. But I think I just realized, you know, what he did in his career is fantastic. You know, I envy it. And, you know, he's my biggest role model. And he's my father at first. But I think the more I realized, you know, I went to school, I got my education, and now I'm traveling in Europe while still playing hockey. And, you know, it's kind of two birds and one stone. So would I give up playing in the NHL? Absolutely. But I don't regret the path that I've taken this thus far. And even talking to him, you know, he's, you know, he's quite envious of what I'm doing. You know, I'm not, we're not making millions of dollars, but just to be able to still play the game you love while travel, you know, one of the most beautiful parts of the world in Europe. And there's so much to offer there. I think, I think it kind of, you know, speaks for itself that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do with hockey, as long as you're enjoying the experience and enjoy it with the people that you love. Um, you know, hopefully my family is able to come over uh, around the holidays, uh, as long as COVID, you know, keeps quiet. But uh, going back to what he said, like he won four Stanley Cups, you know, that's not many players can say that. And of that, I'd say 12 of his teammates are 12, if not more, Hall of Famers. And he played with some of the best players that ever laced them up. So I think the biggest thing that I've taken from him is, you know, he learned how to win. You know, he learned how to win and didn't matter what role it was. You know, everyone knew their roles on those teams, and that's why they were so successful for so many years. And that's the hardest part of hockey is just accepting your role and going with it because on a winning team, everyone's going to sacrifice something, but it's all for the better part of the club. And that's something I've always taken um, whenever I've played is, you know, just what does it take to win? You know, does it scoring that big goal or is it blocking that shot in the last minute of the, of the game? So, um, but I've taken a lot of life lessons from my dad and, you know, at the end of the day, he is my father. Um, but I do, I do love and envy what he did and uh, I'm just trying to do the best I can with my pro career. We'll start to wind things up now, Brock. So I want to ask what are your hopes and expectations for this move and the season ahead? You've already mentioned you want to win a championship. I suppose that goes without saying. What else is on the agenda when you're over in Scotland? Just uh, keep continuing to grow as a player and as a person. And, you know, if we have a lot of young guys on the club, you know, I want to be able to share, shed some knowledge and experience from my, you know, from my days um, onto them and just show them up what it takes to be a pro. But, if not, then I just want to be the best I can on and off the ice and win a championship, um, but also enjoy the experience. You know, we I've, I've been to Scotland tw uh, once. Uh, we did an exhibition series uh, with Dundee two years ago, and I loved it. Um, so to be able to say that Scotland's going to be my home for the next six months, um, obviously, you know, business is all, you know, I got to take care of business on the ice, but during my free time, I'd love to experience um you know the land and um you know what scotland has to offer and especially the rest of the uk you know you've heard so many great stories from people that you know that have traveled there lived there and you know what it has to offer compared to the rest of the world i think it's something that we want them to take full advantage of and uh just enjoy i know it's been a tough year with covid and it seems like things are getting a lot better but at the end of the day um you know, I just want to be, I just want to keep my health and uh, for my wife and I, we want to stay healthy and safe and, but also enjoy it the best of our ability because last year we were quite isolated in lockdown in Denmark. So if we get a chance to um, be able to experience it this year, um, we'd certainly love to take advantage of that. Okay, last two questions. These are the two questions I always end on. The first one is I want to know a fun fact about you. Tell us something not a lot of people know about you. Oh, um, well, I was born in the U.S., so I have dual citizenship, um, but I do go, um, my nationality is Canadian, if people were to ask. Um, so 
you know, basically if I ever wanted to move down to the States, I could just cross the border tomorrow and, you know, enter freely. So I think that's something that people don't realize about myself. Cool. And the last one, a message to the fans, the Purple Army, we call them. What would you like to say to them as they're watching this? I'd just like to say I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, I've talked to a couple of people I know that have played there, and they've said nothing but great things about the city and especially the fan base. And, you know, it's been a long <clears throat> it's been a long two years with COVID and uh, what's going on in the world. So to be able to, you know, get a chance to lace them up and uh, hopefully draw crowds into the stadium um, near full capacity if it's an opportunity, um, we just – you know, we'd like to shed some light into our lives. Uh, and I know sports is a great way to do that, especially during tough times. So I'd like to say just thank you for the opportunity. Um, we can't, we're ecstatic to get over there and, uh, you know, we're ready to win some hockey games and make some noise this season. Great message, Brock. And thank you so much for your time. Great to meet you. And you, like the others, can't wait to, to meet up with you later in the year. Thank you for your time. No, oh, no problem, Craig. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, <laughs>